After the mudslide that wiped away 90% of a Swiss Alps uh, village, rescuers racing to prevent further disaster. There are vast mounds of unstable debris that have caused a huge lake to swell on the river that leads uh, out of Blotten. Still missing a man in his 60s. Rescue efforts hampered by unstable grounds. Emerald Maxwell has more. 90% of the village of Blatten has been wiped off the map. Buried under a deluge of mud, rock and ice after the Birch Glacier crashed down the mountain Wednesday in Switzerland's southern Wallace region. The hamlet had been home to 300 people and was evacuated last week due to the impending danger. Jetzt ist das, dieses worst case scenario geschehen. Now the worst case scenario has happened. This means that the three million cubic blocks that went onto the glacier all came down with the glacier. This is very, very rare. Rare, but becoming less so in the Alps with climate change. Close monitoring of the glacier helped avoid the worst Wednesday, but other collapses have been more deadly. In 2022, the Marmolada Glacier in Italy killed 11 people as it crumbled down the mountain. And in 2017, eight were killed and many homes destroyed when the biggest landslide in over a century came down close to the village of Bondo. This type of collapse can happen pretty much anywhere in the Alps, especially at very high altitude. And it's linked to global warming and the disappearance of the permafrost, the frozen soil. So the ice that cements the rock gradually disappears. Back in Blatten, authorities are now monitoring the nearby river Lonza, which has been blocked by the debris, causing a new lake to form and posing a flood risk to the valley below. For more, let's cross to Lausanne in Switzerland. Stuart Lane is professor of uh, geomorphology at the University of Lausanne. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. You're welcome. Uh, l let me begin with uh, uh, the latest there. And uh, what is the risk right now with this debris basically forming a lake uh, below that mudslide? Yes, that's right. I mean, it, it's still possible that further sediment comes down in the form of debris flows. But really, the biggest risk now is that the debris and ice that came down yesterday afternoon has made a, a major uh, landslide dam. And um, so all of the water, the snow melt in particular, that's coming down the valley is accumulating behind the dam. Um, that water has already flooded the homes that weren't destroyed. Uh, when the landslide came down, uh, and that dam will continue to be there. Um, the late level will continue to rise until either um, there's some kind of uh, intervention to, to manage that, um, or unfortunately, there is a catastrophic failure uh, of the dam. Uh, and these landslide dams are known to fail. I mean, they're, they're so far relatively rare in Europe, but in, in similar kind of geological settings in, Al in alpine environments in Himalaya, for instance, landslide failures, uh, landslide dam failures are unfortunately quite common. And the Swiss army's been roped in. W what is the remit of the, the soldiers that are being brought in? Right. I mean, the Swiss Army, as well as the wider civil protection, um, will be there um, as soon as it is safe uh, in order to start to try and put in mitigation measures. And their primary focus will effectively be to reduce the risk of any further loss of life. That's the first priority. And then the second will, of course, be the, 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 the reducing any further um, damages. The problem is that the, the this deposit that's been created is itself extremely unstable. Um, there could be more debris to come down. And if you have people working there when the actual um, failure of the, the dam were the, the, the dam to fail, then you have an extremely serious problem. And to the best of my knowledge, the, the people who can actually start to try to manage the problem and reduce the effects of, or the risks of a, of, a, of a landslide dam failure can't actually get into the, into the site to do anything about it. Uh, authorities, it seems, did a great job because uh, people were evacuated uh, beforehand, you could have had a very high death toll otherwise, but there is one man missing. And you talk about unstable deposits. Apparently, that's hampering the efforts to search for him. 
Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, you you when you do a search and rescue of this kind, um, your your first priority is the safety of those doing the search and rescue. Um, and the search and rescues have had to leave the site now um, because they've been unable to make any progress with finding him. So yes, indeed, it's a uh, it's there's not going to be much progress, I think, in that avenue certainly today. Stuart Lane, have you ever seen anything like this? No, I mean, I've been working in the Alps for more than 30 years. I've never seen anything quite like this. Um, I mean, it's an exceptional event. It's what we call a cascade event. So as your previous speaker said, we have melting permafrost. The rock fell on the glacier. The weight of the rock on the glacier made the glacier flow, flow very fast. Um, it lost all its resistance to motion and it just collapsed down onto the valley side before. And I, I have never seen anything quite like this in, in all the time I've been working here. So what conclusions should authorities draw? Um, I mean, as you said earlier, the authorities did a very good job of evacuating the population. So the short term management of this crisis was actually, uh, I, I don't think you could have done anything different. The problem is, is you can't engineer yourself out of something of this size. You can't build engineering structures that could stop this happening. And that requires a much more difficult process of thinking about land use zoning, um, of identifying where these risks are going to happen in the future. With climate change, we're going to see more of that. And then making interventions in the land use planning such that zones uh, that are at risk um, are not developed uh, and in, make, in some cases may actually need to be abandoned. And of course, that's a much more difficult social and economic question than simply building some kind of engineering structure. So you're saying that uh, there are entire villages that will have to be evacuated in the Alps? We already have two at the moment. We have Blatten itself. We have another one in the southeast of Switzerland um, and in Brienz, which has had to be evacuated um, and may well have to be evacuated again. And I think it's worth emphasizing that these kinds of situations are at the moment exceptional. And the real work that has to be done now is to work out where in these areas that for many um, decades and centuries have been, been entirely safe, there could now be an elevated risk of this kind of event happening. And that requires very, very careful geophysical analyses, analyses using satellite data to try and work out where these instabilities are, and then to see where interventions might be needed. So. We know that with global warming, and there was a new report out uh, this week about how it's going faster than expected, temperatures are rising and that makes glaciers melt. The other big effect of uh, climate change is more extreme weather. So if you have increased amounts of big rainstorms uh, in the Alps, is that an avalanche and a mudslide risk? Yes, it is. Um, I mean, in two senses. I mean, the event yesterday afternoon was triggered by a relatively small rainfall event, and, but that just bought, just determined when the event happened. It would have probably happened um, anyway. And the whole question of extreme rainfall, um, rainfall on unstable sedimentary deposits um, is without a doubt a serious risk in the alpine environment. And I mean, that is something that we're only starting to really um, see in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, but it is without a doubt something that is going to, to make zones that were previously safe um, at potential risk. Now, Blatten is, is a long way off from where you are by the banks of, of Lake Geneva. But you've, you've done research that shows that Lake Geneva is changing because of global warming. Yes, I mean, uh, the amount of sediment arriving in Lake Geneva is, is, is changing quite dramatically. Um, Although I have to say that it's not simply due to global warming. I mean, we know that as as, as climate is 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 warming, that glaciers are melting, they're producing more sediment, and you can see that in the signal uh, in Lake Geneva. Um, but the signal in Lake Geneva is an interesting one. It's actually also due to things like how much sediment we take out for construction. So when we had the financial crisis in 2008, 2010, there was less sediment deposit. There was more sediment deposit in Lake Geneva because we took less out uh, for the construction industry. Um, so uh, these are complicated systems, but it, 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 there is without a doubt um, a signal of greater sediment delivery to all our alpine lakes at the moment, which we attribute to, 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 to climate change. Stuart Lane, so many thanks for being with us from Lausanne. You're welcome.
More news to come here on France 24. Plus, uh, we will uh, raise the curtain on the uh, Champions League final on Saturday, Paris Saint-Germain, bidding to be, become only the second French team to win uh, Europe's premier footballing club title. That's coming up right here on France 24.